go, everybody, we are in for a treat today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So join me live, and it's the one and only Ryan Foland. And today we are going to discuss how to communicate, how to sell your ideas so that people will listen, pay attention, and hopefully take some action. So welcome to the weekly show of Classroom Without Walls. And my name is I. I'm the host of this weekly show. <laughs> and join me live is my dear friend, Roy. Oh my God, look at him. <laughs> Everybody, this is going to be epic. And uh, so before we are actually live um, on LinkedIn, hello everyone on LinkedIn. We are also live on Periscope. Hello, Periscope. We are also live on Facebook, on my personal page. And <laughs> public. you don't like Facebook? I love Facebook. We're also live on Facebook and on YouTube. So if you are live with us right now, please share this hashtag Classroom Without Wars and let us know where you are joining us from social media wise and geographically speaking. And as I mentioned earlier today, we are going to discuss a very exciting topic that I'm personally passionate about, which is how we can really communicate very effectively so that we can maximize the ROI of our message. And uh, so before we get started with our interview today, can you just remove that? I can't stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> what well, did I have? Did I have something on my? What was there? Was something wrong there? No. You definitely got my attention. <laughs> and uh, so, before we go started with our interview today, just in case you don't know whom is this amazing person, I want to take a few seconds to introduce Ryan. He's a global keynote speaker, and he's also the managing partner of Influence Tree which is a personal branding accelerator program. They have online courses and coaching. And Ryan's clients include New York Times best-selling authors, venture capitalists, and Fortune 500 executives. And Ryan is also now one time, now two time, now three time, but four time TEDx speaker. And uh, he's also, a top marketer recognized by Inc. Magazine and a top branding expert uh, recognized by Entrepreneur Magazine and is also the co-author of, I need that bookmark, I need the bookmark. <laughs> Ditch the act. <laughs> <laughs> the book will come out uh, later this year, and we had the great honor to have Leonard Kim on our show last week, and we talked a lot about the book, and today we're also going to discuss a little bit about the book, and we're also going to discuss Ryan's 313 method. So anyway, welcome to the show, Ryan. So excited to have you here. We already have 50 people join us live right now, not including LinkedIn. So everybody, we are in for a treat. I'm just... <laughs> There will also be a show. You guys, you have to stay until the end because there will be a show, right? You promised me, Ryan. There will you be know a what? Show. If I, I always promise you a show, I, you know, no matter what. This is awesome. Do you want to? And also, by the way, everyone, I have my dear friend, Peter, as always. He is on all the social media channels to monitor comments and questions. If you have any question, tag Peter. He's everywhere. And Thank let you. him know. And, uh, and if you have any question related to communication, branding, pitching your ideas, all those things, and Ryan is the best. Wow. All right, is it over now? Is that it? <laughs> the show is over! <laughs> anyway, do you want to add a few things to my very brief uh, introduction, Ryan? Sure. So I am also a ginger. I'm a very proud ginger. Uh, ginger is in my red beard and my freckles. And I, I like to believe that we can all be a little more ginger. So uh, though they're the, the nation of red-headed freckles uh, is small, <laughs> together we can all be more ginger. And... Uh, I'm known sometimes as the ginger MC. I really try to keep a positive attitude, but I am not gonna deny that bad things happen. And they do, just like I got stung by a bee when I was in Catalina recently. And the first day seemed fine. 
And then a day after my foot swelled up. And then a day after that, my foot is bigger. And so normally I wouldn't like share this, but in the honor of ditching the act, I shared that I got a bee sting and everybody gave me all kinds of advice. Everybody gave me all kinds of support. They even encouraged me to go to the doctor. So I got the meds and now I'm standing up on both feet and I'm ready to rock and roll. Uh, That's no, but awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be here. And uh, for those who don't know, uh, I love to sail. And so it's, you know, I think it's important to have a good balance between being obsessed about work and excited about what you're doing to, to help people and improve lives. But at the same time, you can't forget about stepping back and making sure doing stuff that you want. So if I'm not speaking, I'm likely on a sailboat. Wow, this is so cool. And before we get started with our first question, I just want to give a quick shout out. I'm now going to be able to mention everyone's name. I'll try my best. A queen's here, Vicky's here, and Jerry's here. And we also have a bunch of people join us live on Periscope. Thank you so much, everyone. And on LinkedIn, Patrick Gallen and... Uh, and thank you so much, everyone. And uh, let me know if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. So are you ready to start, Ron? Yeah, you know, what I, you know what I'm doing right now? You know what this is? You know what I'm doing? It's sign language for applause. Oh, I love it. See, I'm always <laughs> learning, always learning from you. And uh, yeah, and Catherine, thank you for joining us. So in one of your TED Talks, and which is titled, Why No One Cares What You Do. So that is very <laughs> sad to hear, right? Hurts. Yeah, so it's, explain it's, to it's us hurtful. why no one cares what we do. What do you mean by that? Well, I, I truly believe that nobody cares what you do. And it may sound harsh, but when you really think about it, we're all selfish. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, there there is so much out there. As you and Leonard talked about, there's so much noise out there. And at the end of the day, we're bombarded by messages. We're bombarded by branding. We're bombarded by everything. And wherever you go, there are new people that have something else to offer. And you're like, ah, it's just, I genuinely think people don't care what you do. But what they do care about is the problem that you solve. Oh, I and love if you that. think about it, it's actually empowering because so many people are excited about what they do and they go to a networking event or they build a website or they build a business and then they just assume that people will want to know about what they do. And in fact, they are misled because a lot of times when you meet somebody, the first question that somebody will ask you is, what do you do? And so we're just, we're bred to think that that's important. But what happens is the person who's asking you, what do you do? For the most part, they are asking that to have you explain what you do so they can pretend to listen and then wait for you to hopefully ask them what you do so that you can tell them what you do in hopes that they care what you do when both of you are really just sort of trying to get each other to care about what you do. And so <laughs> the my th that was my fourth TEDx talk and it, it was the message I wanted to get across was that you really can get people to care about you based on the problem that you solve. And it's okay if the problem that you solve is not for everyone, not everybody has to like you. And once you start to get comfortable, uh, and this is where things tie in with Ditch the Act, the, the 313 is part of Ditch the Act, and it's part of the, the ability to communicate who you are and what you do in a compelling way. So nobody cares what you do. And I'd love to hear the comments because it, it feels aggressive. Do you believe that people care more about what you do or the problem that you solve? I'd love to hear the comments, but time and time again i've had these conversations and i get to the point where people care about the problem that you solve what do you think dr i do you think that people care more about the problem or what you do yeah i i totally agree i i think people definitely care about the problem that i'm solving or trying to i remember i was at a conference i don't remember which conference but at that conference, I was actually a guest on you, on your podcast show. So <laughs> I learned this method and I was actually practicing this during like small talks and networking event. And this worked so much more effectively than my old traditional self-introduction at, you know, networking events. So I, I totally agree with you. Yes. And here, here's a trick. Here's an actual tangible thing that you can do and you can try and you can practice. When someone asks you, what do you do? 
which they will ask you, pause for a moment and then say, you know what? It's not really what I do that's important. In fact, I, like I do a lot of stuff, but what is important is the problem that I solve. And then stop talking. Mm -hmm. Don't say anything else. And it might be a one, 1,000, two, 1,000, but the person you're talking to will say, so what is the problem that you solve? Now you can tell them the problem that you solve and ask them, do they think it's a problem? If they say yes, you can ask them if it's a problem that they have. If they say yes, you can ask them if it's a problem that they're looking to solve anytime soon. If they say yes, you can smile and say, I can help you out. Now, if you think about it, during that whole process, I call this permission-based pitching, at, at no point did I actually no, no, explain no. what I do. <laughs> can you go back a little bit, explain permission-based pitching to us? Yes, permission-based pitching. So uh, let's see, I can share my screen, right? Yes. Okay, let me look for the file real quick. Um, permission-based pitching. Okay, so here, I've got it up. Now, let me see if I can click over to here and share my screen, because this will be helpful here. Share. Okay, share, but I'm going to quickly jump over to, oh, I've got to click this, share, and then let's go to this. Can you see this? Yes. Does it? Do you see the drawing? Because I don't see you. I Yes, everyone can see this, yes. Okay, so this is permission-based pitching. If you can clearly articulate the problem that you solve without any mention of what you do, which is a very difficult thing, so the problem I solve is blank, then you can ask somebody first, is it a problem? If they say yes, you're moving along. If they say no, like, no, I don't think that's a problem, then you don't go any further. You go back and you figure out why they don't think it's a problem. Now, once they understand the problem that you're solving, you ask them, is it a problem that they have? So do you have the problem? And if they say yes, you can say, well, are you looking to solve this or fix it anytime soon? If they say yes, doot, 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 I can help you out. Now let's do another scenario. If they understand it's a problem, yes. Do you have the problem? No. If you can ask them, well, that's great. Does your friend have that problem? Or do you know anybody that has that problem? Now at that point, you've stopped pitching them. You, they're not threatened by you trying to sell them on it, but you genuinely wanna maybe help their friend. Now, do you know if, if your friend is looking to do anything about this soon? If they say yes, I can help your friend out. Okay, so it's this conversation design strictly based on the fact, whoop, let me stop my share, based on the fact that you're starting with a problem, you're identifying that's a problem. And if somebody has that problem, then you can solve it. Wow, this is this is really interesting. I, I love this. This is only the beginning. I'm already like taking notes <laughs> like crazy. So if you don't mind going back a little bit, uh, Ryan, so tell us about this 313 method. What do you mean by that? And what does this like model or formula, what does this 313 uh, method include? Okay, so let me go back to how I originally created it. Now, I was brought on to the University of California, Irvine to start and launch the first ever undergraduate entrepreneurship program. It's called the Entrepreneur Center. UCI are the ant eaters. And so is the Entrepreneur Center. And I had the fortunate opportunity of interfacing with thousands of students, their ideas for the first time. And it was a very Socratic method, whereas I would never, and I, I still never tell people whether their idea is good or bad. I'll just challenge them to find ways to find out if it's a good or bad idea. Mm -hmm. And so I talk with these students and I'd say the simple question, tell me about your idea. And they would go on and on and on and on and on. And if you know entrepreneurs, they typically talk too much. So they're so excited about their idea. Sure. And if you just, you just ask them, then they just pile on all the information. And so from a technical standpoint, I was running out of time. I couldn't service as many students. So I said, let me ask you a different question. Can you tell me what you do in the shortest amount of time? And it didn't change anything. They would just continue to talk and talk and talk and talk. So what I then did is I started to break it down. I said, before you tell me anything, let's play a little game. Can you tell me the problem that you're solving? And then I want to try to figure out maybe what you're trying to, what you're solving it with. 
so many of the students couldn't even explain the problem that they're solving. And I said, okay, how about your solution? Let's just cut to the chase. What's your solution? Then they would go on and on. I'd say, can you state it in a sentence? And then I repeated the same question with the market. And what happened is that I was able to guide through these three questions. What is the problem that you solve? What is your solution? And what is your market? And with these three questions, that's what I needed to know about their business. But the real magic comes when you force someone to only explain each of those in one sentence. So what happened is that I was able to get students to understand how to explain their business in three sentences, the problem, the solution, and the market. And then to go even further, I was able to take those three sentences and mathematically change them into one sentence and then using metaphor and analogy to turn it into as little as three words. And so it, it became something where the students would be like, oh my gosh, have you been 313 by Ryan? Have you done the 313? And I was like, wow, did this just become a thing? And so I've used it and I've launched it over the last five years. I've spoken about it internationally. It's a big part of my keynoting. And I find that what people end up doing is they get further along the line in their business or building their brand. And sometimes they forget about how important the first few steps are. Mm -hmm. I know Leonard mentioned that a lot of times when people are building their brand, they're doing all the right things, but they're doing them in the wrong order. And one of the first things you have to be able to do is describe the problem you solve, the solution, and the market. And if you cannot do that in one sentence each, well, you gotta you have to start there because you can't start at the finish line. Yeah, this is so powerful. And uh, if this is the first time that you guys are like listening to Ryan talk about this, wait until the end. This I still remember when I was a guest on your show, Ryan. I after the interview, I gained so much, so much clarity on my branding, on my messaging. So I can't wait to dive into this. So let's talk about each of the element. So okay. the first one is problem. So yeah. how can we talk about our problem in a way so that people want to listen? And I love to learn more about that finger analogy. <laughs> so share with us. Okay. Well, first I want to clarify that it's not the problems that you have. So we're not going out there and explaining, oh, hey, I've got this problem. I've got that problem. It's the problems that you solve. And if you agree that people care more about the problem that you solve than about what you do, then it logically makes sense that there is value in being able to articulate the problem that you solve without explaining what you do. And when I ask people, what's the problem that you solve? Don't tell me what you do. Nine out of 10 times, they just launch right into what they do. So the first point I want to make is that it's crucial to be able to remove what you do from communicating the problem. Now, when you communicate the problem, it's important that you're only explaining one single problem. And this is very hard for people because they say, well, I'm solving the problem that it's not fast enough. And I'm solving the problem that it's too expensive. And I'm solving the problem that it doesn't look really good. But here's what happens. If you present three different options, these are the three problems that I solve. Okay, I, I solve these problems. Do you agree that it is a problem? You can't, because I gave you three problems. Mm -hmm. So for every, if I said, here's the single problem, is it a problem, yes or no? You could tell me yes That's or right. no. But what if you weren't, you didn't care about what it looked like, or you didn't care about the cost, or you didn't care about the speed? So when you describe the problem that you solve, for every additional problem other than one, what you're doing is you're reducing the chance that somebody will see you as a complete solution by 100% each time. So if I say I solve this problem, this problem, and this problem, I've increased the chances that you will not see me as a full solution by 200%. So one of the hardest things for people to do is decide what is that one big problem? And I, I, can, I have a couple exercises. One is ask your clients. Say, if you had to choose the single biggest problem that I've solved for you, what would that be? You wanna make sure that the problem feels like a problem. And in, or, in order to explain this, I, I talk about the difference between a finger, uh, 
be your, a paper cut or your finger being chopped off. So I, what is the difference between a paper cut and a finger being chopped off? The second one is a lot more scary and like, ooh. Right, okay. Now what about, if, what about, okay, so let's, let's see the here. first one is, oh, I'm sorry. And okay, so, I, let's, so here we I have a piece on. of paper. Here we have a piece of paper, okay? Now this is live. I don't suggest anybody tries this at home, but we're gonna do this here. And if I have this as a paper, and I go right here, on the count of three, one, two. <laughs> Oof. You see, I think I got a little bit of blood in there, right? Oof. Yes. So, <laughs> so what happens when you get a paper cut? It's like, yeah, I mean, like it. it's unfortunate, but no big deal. Yeah, so I, if I was in an office with a bunch of people, I might be like, nothing to see here, no, nothing's going on, I'm fine, right? Maybe do that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. But what if, for example, you happen to have a knife? I don't know. Um, and instead of a finger uh, you, with a paper cut, we replaced it with a knife. Now, again, this is live. Oh I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna suggest that anybody tries this, okay? I can see you're getting nervous, okay. On the count of three, let's see the difference here, okay, ready? One, two, <laughs> now, what would happen if I actually cut my finger off? Right now, live TV. We would probably stop the broadcast, oh, right? Oh, absolutely. I would call, like, yeah. <laughs> you call 911, everybody would freak out, and, and, and I, would, I would go to the hospital now. I'd, I'd grab my finger, probably be running around. Blood would be everywhere. Now, what is the difference between a paper cut and a finger being chopped off? Think about how you felt. What were the emotions going on inside of you when I did a paper cut versus a finger being chopped off? Yeah, the second one definitely a lot uh, stronger. And uh, you, I, you, you definitely got my attention. I want to do something about it. I want to lace oh, right it, I want there. to get wait, involved. Wait. Right there, right there, what you said. The difference between a paper cut and a finger chop is the assumed or implicit reaction that you have, that somebody else has. Mm -hmm. So you can describe the problem that you solve, but if you describe it in a way that feels like a paper cut and you tell somebody, this is the problem that I solve. Okay, so what? Your listener is not gonna have any inherent reaction of what to do. But if I sit there and chop my finger off, you instinctively think, oh my gosh, this is serious. I need to help out. And so what happens is that when people describe the problem that they solve in a bleh, bleh, meh kind of way, it doesn't get somebody feeling like there's something to do about it. And mm -hmm. so I work with people to not only define the problem that they solve, but how to communicate it in a way so that it, it's more towards the finger chop side of things. And what happens is it gets people prepped to want to actually do something about it. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna ask, how do you actually solve that problem? This is so good. This is so good. So I, I love how Catherine, what Catherine coined, yes. emotionally charged urgency. This is this is so true. Yeah. So so let's say for example that um, you for example, uh, if you were to say the problem that you solve, could you say that in one sentence? One sentence is to, oh my God, is <laughs> to <laughs> don't laugh at me. I'm not laughing it's, at you. I'm here for you is to prepare students for the future because- Okay, burn, burn, burn. <laughs> Do you hear what you just said? You just told me what you did. You, I asked for the problem and you said, what you do is you help prepare students for the future. Do you see how you gave me the solution? That's so true. Even so, though this is the second time we talk about this, yes. Okay, so try it again. But like, what is the, what is the problem? All you have to do is flip the way that you're saying it. Our educational system is failing. Okay, now that feels like more of a finger chop, but there's, I don't know if there's enough information around that, right? So what specific problem in the failing education do you address? Parents are wasting their money by sending their children to a school. Okay, 
So we, do, you, do you see how you got all lit up about that, right? So you can say, the problem is that when parents are wasting money, spending on these high educations to go to a system that is, the, the system is already broken. That is the problem that I'm solving. That and you, is. if you watch this back, you should see when you first tried to answer and you're like, well, you know, we help students improve their, and then when I pushed you, you were like, rah! <laughs> Like that's, that's so that true. I, I found it. I found yeah, it. Because I'm a parent. Emotional, that's the emotional charge. And so you can find and craft a sentence. You can you can find a few different versions of it. But the important part is to say one problem, you have to make it bloody, and you have to try to package it into a sentence. So when you get this emotionally charged urgency, people will want to know what your solution is. And I want to make something very clear here. When I work with people, I'm not fundamentally telling them to say anything different because there's a good chance that you're already explaining the problem, you're explaining the solution and your market and whatever you're doing. But I'm asking you to fundamentally consider changing the order in which you relay the information. If somebody asks you what you do, tell them it's not what you do that's important. Mm -hmm. Tell them it's the problem that you solve and start with the problem. Once you get them understanding the problem and if they feel that emotional reaction, in their brain, instantaneously, while you're talking, they will be trying to figure it out. Oh yeah, education system problem. I, I feel like I wasted my brain. Like their brain's spinning. Then they're gonna go, hmm. So how do you solve that problem? Now, once you start to tell them, they are locking up what you're saying with what they thought in their brain. And then once it triggers, oh yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah, I know what you do. I understand. And it's as a solution to the problem. And then. What's very important is the market because your solution is not for anyone. And when you assume that it's for everyone, it's actually for no one, but that's the market side. So can you state the problem that you solve in one sentence without saying what you do, making it bloody? That is the first step of the 313 challenge. Yeah, I, I, I love this. This is, this is great. I, I can tell how. Even myself, just like my own emotional reaction, it's like different levels. So this is great. And we are going to uh, take some, do you want to try this with your live audience, Ron? For sure, for sure. Now, one thing I want to explain real quick, and this is a big part of what we talk about in Ditch the Act, is that you've got to find the problem that you solve as a core piece of who you are. And if you really can define that, then it helps to start guide your brand and the type of content that you create. And it can be this, it can be your, your personal mission statement could be the problem that you're solving. So uh, it's not just semantics. It's not just voodoo. It's not just wordplay. At the end of the day, you truly can get people interested in what you do based on the problem that you solve. Mm -hmm. So let's do it. Let's get somebody in the hot seat. This is great. And uh, I also love and uh, I also love some of the, so I'm trying to get my friend Peter to join us live, but I love some of the the, peop, the, the comments people suggested is threatened. I, I, I love how people like, you know, all those uh, yeah, evoke the, yes. some so The emotion. problem is that the current educational system is preparing students for a world that doesn't exist. That's the problem I'm solving. And then if you stop, the person who you're talking to is going to go, how do you solve that problem? How do you solve that problem? And now you've got them interested in what you have to say. Yeah, I love how you, cause I'm definitely one of those people. Let me know in the comment section, everyone join us live right now. Do you tend to talk a lot? So when people ask me this question, I always like blah, 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 blah. 10 minutes pass by, I'm still blah, blah, blah. So I really love how you mentioned here, just say a little bit, stop, right? Yeah, totally. So here, here's here's a way to think about it. If somebody asks you what you do, do you ramble like a babbling fool? Do you talk so fast that you're blue in the face? Is your big idea all over the place? Do you say the same thing every time? Do you bore everyone out of their mind? You might even do it and you might not even know it. Your startup hasn't started, all you wanna do is grow it. Every time you open up your mouth, you seem to blow it. You wish there was a method or a way you could control it. Well, have no fear, the 313 is here. It will make your message clear. First, you state the problem. Then you say you solve it and don't, 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 don't forget the market. <laughs> oh my God, guys, this is like the best. 
Everybody who comes to my show in the future, I expect this level of entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. So my friend Peter is here, and uh, and uh, so we are going to do a quick walkthrough of this three one three method by using <laughs> Peter as an example because I'm too embarrassed to make mistakes on the spot, and Peter doesn't mind, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah. All right, Peter, so 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 let's do this. It's going to be this is the three one three challenge, and I'm not being harsh. I'm just being direct. And there are certain no, rules, and I'll set them up. All right. First step, can you explain the problem that you solve in one sentence, making it bloody, and do not tell me anything about what you do? Ready, go. <sighs> Taking the frustration and, oh, this is hard on the spot. Taking the difficulty and frustration out of studying or developing a marketing strategy. Okay, so one tip is that you have to use the keyword problem. Because if you were just okay. to say that in a sentence on its own, I don't trigger that that's a problem. That's a statement. So one suggestion for everybody, use the word problem. The problem is, the biggest problem is, the problem that I solve is, okay? So try it just one more time with that trigger word. Okay. The problem that I solve is that people are starting their marketing strategies in the middle and not at the beginning where it should be started. Okay, so I, Ooh, on, a, I love on, a, that. Wait, wait, on a scale of one to 10, I want you to tell me how bloody was that problem. A 10, he got the knife out. Okay, and show me with your hands. Show yes. me with your hands. This one is definitely better than the first one he mentioned no, no, no. because. Just as, I guess. Uh, so vote for me on a five, scale of one to 10. Five, 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 right. five. So Peter, you have a lot of room to improve. And the reason why it's a five is because there's no blood. What is the end result? Where, what is the blood on the end of the finger? Like, just tell me really quick. What? What happens if they start in the middle? Do they go out of business? Do they waste money? Like what? Yeah, perfect. People are wasting time and money starting their okay, marketing that's, strategies. That's, that's two things, time and money. Okay, just choose okay. one. What's, the, what's yeah. the biggest? People are wasting their time. Okay. So now see if you can rephrase it. The time needs to be the blood. And the definition is that they're starting somewhere in the middle. Okay, but you, get, you have to make this sellable, okay? And one sentence, ready, go. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> okay, so something like um, now tell me that the problem is that people start their marketing in the middle or they don't understand their marketing. I don't understand the, the, the problem when it comes to marketing. Yeah, sure. So, so a lot of people that aren't in marketing or even in marketing seem to start at the very middle or end with the communication part and what that communication looks like rather than doing the difficult bit that's at the start of it and understanding the target market, understanding what people's needs, wants, and frustrations are, and solving problems. And then the okay, creative stop, should really- stop, 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 stop. So do you see how like that just becomes a bumbled mess, right? Yeah, yeah. Again, I'm being nice here. So- Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, it's 10 p.m. It. It's 10 p.m. Peter's time. Don't be so harsh, okay? He's my friend. Hey, Peter- <laughs> Go for it, go for it. Do, do a couple push-ups. you're good. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna prep you this time and just, don't worry about it, but just go with your gut and make it bloody. So can you tell me the problem that you solve in one sentence? The problem I solve is to stop people wasting their time with ineffective marketing strategies. Okay, wow. I, on a scale of one to 10. Definitely seven, okay, better. Seven. Get in there. You're better, okay? So I think that that was, was not enough information, right? So again, maybe maybe something along the lines of, the biggest problem for people who think they can market is that they soon find out they have no idea what they're doing, resulting in hundreds of hours of wasted time that they can never get back. I on, a scale of, I, on a scale of one to 10, how was that? Uh, so <laughs> she wasn't paying attention. How about you, Peter, on a scale of one to 10, how was that? Yeah, that's getting up to nine. Okay, so there still is maybe like one thing to change. And I want everybody to just take a second and I want to teach a little teachable moment here. If you're trying to get feedback from people, ask them the simple question on a scale of one to 10, how good was that? How bad was that? Like create a measurement. If they say seven in their mind, there's at least three things that they could probably tell you to improve upon it. And so when you're asking for feedback, it's important to give specific feedback but people are friendly. They don't want to tell you anything was wrong. They'll be like, oh, that was really good. 
okay, put a number to it on a scale of one to 10. And they'll be like, that's a nine. So I could say, Peter, what are we missing? What's that one thing? And then we can have a dialogue. Okay. Yeah. So let's assume that that is your, your problem sentence, the one. Okay. So now that I understand the problem, can you explain your solution in one sentence? Okay. So the solution is to provide simple and straightforward marketing planning and studying that starts where it should start at the beginning, not the middle or the end of the process. Okay. Now I, my only question, the only requirement for this to pass, does that solution solve the problem? Not really. It feels too okay. long to me. Okay. So, so here, here's, here's the importance. People put over emphasis on the solution. Now, real quick, let me ask you a question. What is the difference? Can we see this? Okay. Here. Yes. What is the difference this between is amazing. I'm loving this. What is the difference between what and how, what are the different, what's the difference between those two words? <laughs> well, the, the how is how you'll solve a yeah. problem. The what okay. is the actual problem. Okay. So, so, so what is what, and what is how, if I were to say, what do you do versus how do you do what you do? What's the difference in your answers? Yeah. So you're explaining something or you're explaining how you solve something. Right. But which one is which? Well, what is what you do Okay. and how is how you fix it? Okay. So we oh, you've gone. I think we lost you for a second, Ryan. Is there... yeah, I, I'm here. Running out of... There, can you hear me? I think running... yeah, yes, yeah. I think okay. that one's running out better. Yeah. Okay, it might have. That's why I do one at a time, okay? So, so what takes longer to answer? What you do or how you do what you do? You, you, what you do because you'd go into a bit more detail because you want to you, tell everybody everything. But, but I don't know. Like if I ask you what you do, I'm not asking you how you do what you do. Okay. And here's a fundamental challenge that a lot of entrepreneurs have is that they hear somebody say, what do you do? But in their mind, they take a different answer and they answer how they do what they do. What I asked you was, what is your solution? So think of it like this. Think of it like an iceberg, okay? What you do is very okay. simple. Okay, now if I ask you what the problem is that, you sol that you're solving and you tell me, I'm like, cool, I get that problem. And I ask you, what is your solution? And you just tell me, you just tell me at the top of the surface, you tell me, this is what my solution is. In my brain, I'm like, ah, oh, this guy solves that problem and I, I get it. Mm -hmm. If you tell me what you do and I'm interested at all, what do you think the next question is that I'm gonna ask you? How does that How work? Okay. And so we assume the wrong answer. Now, what happens is that you have this single sentence of your solution. You say it, you stop talking. Then they will say, well, how does that work? How does it tell me about that? And before you answer them, you ask them, tell me how much you know about marketing tutoring. And they will say, I know a lot or I know a little bit, but there's all these pieces of information. So when you tell people things that they already know, it's a form of disrespect. And so this process just teases out the minimal amount of information to get them interested, but just enough to get them to want to know more. And so the requirement, the only thing I really want people to do with the solution is just, just say the what, mm -hmm. so that I will ask how. Mm -hmm. So if the problem is that if, if people want to become marketers and they don't take the initial steps that are needed, they start at the middle or the end, they're going to lose all the time that they invested and they're going to be further from their goal than when they started. That's the problem I solve. So Peter, pretend you said that. What is your solution? <laughs> what? what is your solution? Um, to provide simple and straightforward marketing, planning, and studying solutions to save time, money, and effort. Stop. Just time. Just, just time, right? Because you've already established just time. You already... You so like you sold me at time, so don't go further than that. Yeah. Then I would be like, that's interesting. So how does this actually work? Mm -hmm. And you could say, well, tell me what you know about marketing. I'd be like, well, I think I know all this. And you listen, you listen, you listen, you go, you are so right about all that, but here's why I do things differently. 
let, let's go underwater real quick, okay? So that sentence is the, is the stepping stone to, the, to everything else. And when it comes to your personal brand, if people ask you what you do, try to give that solution as a high level with a little mystique. Then they're going to want to know what it is. So now this third sentence, and we're just in the first part, the three sentences. Can you tell me the market that you serve without telling me the A word or the E word? You are not allowed to use the A word or the E word. Okay, so you explain it and I'll let you know afterwards if you use one of these words. Tell me your target market. You know what, Peter is gonna hit me after this. But Peter I loves know. this. Peter loves this. I'm looking for the off button. There's no off button. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's <laughs> brilliant. absolutely brilliant, love it. <laughs> All right, love it. So, so in one my market. tell me your target market. Um, people be before, sorry, people that are, are studying or have studied marketing. Okay, so let me write what these are and you tell me I if you said it. The A word is, and the E word, you pretty much said. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Here's the thing, if, if you, and most people are afraid to narrow the market because you, you, wanna, you wanna get everybody all encompassing. If you told me the market is people that at one point have studied marketing, there is not one single person that I would make an introduction to because everybody that I know has done that to some extent. They've all taken a marketing 101. So how can you narrow that down? Um, like describe these people, like who are these people? Where do they, like, just like just tell me real quick, who, what type of people are these? Are these people who have taken a certification course and fail? Those are my people, right? Okay. I love this. So, so the idea here when it comes to market is describing the target market. And when you're building your personal brand, sometimes we think that we should be for everyone. It's the hardest thing because we want to have more. Here's a really cool line of questioning real quick. More mathematics. Peter, how many people, if I give you 10 clients, they're all lined up outside. You can choose the location. You can have as much time as you want. You can have a, a couple drinks with them, but you can't get them drunk and you get to pitch them as much time as you want on your business. No three sentences, as much time as you want. Mm -hmm. Out of 10 people who are your target market, how many of those 10 people could you, could you close? 10 tries, no obstacles, as much time as you want. I, I, I'd go for two. Two, okay. Now, let me ask you a question. How many clients can you actually take on right now? How many people could you physically take on right now? 30. 30. Okay. So watch this. If we do the math here. So you have a closing ratio of two. So for every 10 people, you get two. Okay. So two divided by 30 is 15. 15 times 10. What's that? Um, 150. 150. So Peter, you only have to get in front of 150 perfect clients at a closing ratio of 20% to be absolutely maxed out so that you can't handle any more business. Wow. Now, I bet, are, have you ever played baseball? I haven't played it, watched it. Okay, what's your sport? Uh, football or Amer American All right. football. All right, American football. I bet if you went outside your door and you threw a football as far as you could and you drew a circle around that line, there's probably a couple thousand people right there. Okay. So the idea here is that find out, like find out how many people you can actually service, find out what your closing ratio is and focus on a smaller number that has a higher potential of actually seeing themselves as having the problem that you solve, that they'd be comfortable having you solve. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that in its essence is the first three sentences, the problem you solve, your solution and your market. Now, What's fun is that the second step is just, I got stuff stuck to my feet. It is just mathematics. So I don't want to waste paper here. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to do this. Um, we talked about the problem, the solution and the market. How many different ways can you combine those three letters? The mat, the, the formula is three factorial. If you remember that. It's three times two times one, it equals six, okay? So mm -hmm. if I have three things like 
like these three things, I can rearrange them only That's in right. six different ways. Okay, it's, it's mathematics. Now, if I if I took this, I now have six different versions. I have P M S. I have S P M. I have S M P. I have M P S, and I have M S P. Those are the six options, right? So you now, you're down here, you now, if you lock up the sentence that's your problem, solution, and market, you can now combine those into one sentence six different ways, okay? Uh, tell me when to stop. No whammy, no whammy, tell me when to stop. So This is my solution to solve this problem for these people. Or um, for these people who have this problem, this is my solution. So now that I know your market, your solution, your problem, you can choose any one of these and you can say it in a sentence. So for the one that you chose, solution, problem, market, I have a very simple tutoring system for people who have uh, want to be marketers but just find that they're wasting their time, specifically those who failed a test already. Mm. Wow. Okay, so, so there's the one sentence. Now, if we go to three words, this is where it gets exciting because it's not three words. It's actually two things in reference to each other. So pop quiz, if you were a superhero, what kind of superhero would you be? Uh, it's gotta be Superman. Superman. <laughs> okay, if you were a hotel, what kind of hotel would you be? Uh, Hilton. Hilton. Okay, and if you were a fictional character, who would you be? Like a TV show or something like that? Harry Potter. Okay. And what would you name your industry? Marketing. Marketing. So are you the Superman of marketing? Wow. Or are you kind of like the Hilton of marketing? Or are you kind of like, I can't read my writing. What was it? Harry Potter. Harry Potter. You, you know what? I like this one. I'm kind of like the Harry Potter of marketing. <laughs> wow. I okay? love this. So what it does is people's brains are quiz machines. They love to do puzzles, right? Like S Sudoku and crosswords and stuff like that. And if you tell people directly what you do, I am a financial advisor. I am a marketing tutor. It's like, man, you've left no room for creativity. And so this 313 challenge, which by the way, is in Ditch the Act, which you can get at ditchtheact.com. You can, the, the worksheet's in here, goes through the step in this questions. So imagine now for a minute that you meet somebody for the first time and they say, so what do you do? And you're like, I know this sounds <laughs> funny. I know this sounds funny, but think of me as kind of like, I'm kind of like Harry Potter. I'm, I'm kind of like the Harry Potter of marketing. Their Harry brain's going to start going. They're going to start going. And they're like, no, seriously, dude, what do you do? It's, it's not really what I do, but it's the problem that I'm passionate about solving. What's the, what's the problem? The problem is I meet so many people who've wasted all kinds of time because they study for the wrong part of these marketing certifications in their career, never blah, 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 whatever it is. Interesting. So how do you do that? I've got this very top level what problem. Oh, how does that work? Da, 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 can go into it, right? So the 313 isn't an elevator pitch. It's a whole bag of tricks that you can pull out and then reinforce it with a single sentence. But the magic of it is putting you into a series of boxes. Like we just put you into a whole bunch of like boxes, like the Russian dolls, right? Closer and closer. And it doesn't mean that you can't say anything else, but what it does do is it puts, puts you into the spot where you have to pick and choose. And I tell people that the more you talk, the less people listen. And the less you talk, the more people ask questions. So questions leads to conversation. Conversation uncovers curiosity. Curiosity creates that connection, and then that's what will create um, that bond or that potential sale. And when it comes to explaining, people typically just talk too much. They talk past the sale. They try to over-explain. And the less you talk and you hold these back and you set up for the conversation, then it gets exciting. Whew. All right? Well, that, that's kind I, of an abridged version of it. How was it, Peter? You feeling okay? Yeah. That's, like that's, free that's co intense. Free coaching, free coaching, Peter. This is amazing. Yeah, we're not doing this every week, are we? <laughs> <laughs> and follow I and friend I. 
<laughs> no, that, amazing, amazing. I'm I'm halfway through the book as well, which is absolutely oh, cool. perfect. So. All right. Well, you will get to the three one three challenge. Um, and again, if you can describe yourself in less words, it gives you more of a chance to listen more. And you know, ditch the act is about like revealing your personality and like. If I know that you're kind of like Harry Potter, I actually kind of get to know you. You're kind of a little quirky. You know? Like I now know you a little bit more. And you have to get people to know you so that they can like you, so they can trust you. And you just can't assume that because you have accolades, because you have this, people will trust you. Just being yourself. So be the Harry Potter that you are. Help people solve the problems. And don't explain how you do what you do. Just start with the what and let them ask the how. Good job, Peter. Way to stick to it. <laughs> this, you have no idea, Peter, how much people love this exercise. Everyone is coming like crazy. They love this. So thank you so much, Peter. This is like, uh, I love nice. you as a friend. I hope you benefited from this exercise. That, and that's, Peter, all, Peter, that's all Ryan's work. And try to try to figure out what it is. Shoot it to me in the email, and I'll continue to give you some tough love on it, okay? Brilliant. Love the tough love. Love it. All right. Bye. <laughs> 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 That's Ooh. great. I, people really love this. And we have more people who want to do this, but I don't think we have time. So for... I will let them know that I am uh, I had a radio show for the last three years called The 313 Show, and I'm actually relaunching it as The 313 Challenge. So if you are interested, I am going to, my podcast is putting people in the hot seat. So stay tuned. That's going to be launching soon. Oh, wow. That's great. So where can we uh, learn more about this? I uh, you, Literally on LinkedIn and on, on Periscope and on Facebook, more people are interested in giving this a try. Guys, listen, I was a guest on Ryan's podcast. It was uncomfortable. <laughs> but as I mentioned earlier, I learned so much. I gained so much clarity. Just like Peter, I couldn't really, like when people are asking you to describe what you do in one sentence, it is the hardest. Because oftentimes we just blah, 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 talk at least three or four sentences. So this is such a great exercise. I'm so happy Peter had a chance to try this out and you guys should. So where can people book you? I learned okay. more about this. So the booking site is not officially launched yet, but it will be ryan.online forward slash. So it's going to be ryan.online forward slash 313me. 313 me. Now it's not connected right now, but by the time, as soon as I get off, I'll probably reconnect it, but um, check back in a few days and you can apply to be on my podcast. And it's so much fun to put people in the hot seat, <laughs> tough love all day long. And at the end of the day, there's a lot of progress that you'll see. I want to, can I come back? I want to come back. Sure. Yeah. Let's have you back. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> and it's actually right. funny because the more you know about it, the the more detailed and tweaked it gets. Like I can like the three one three is a living being. You continuously revisit it. And it's a great, it's a great barometer to test an idea. If you have an idea, challenge yourself before you go start the business to answer those three questions, to go through the three one three challenge. I'll come up with an idea in the shower. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's the greatest idea ever. And I'll be like, the problem is the, the prop the problem is that's nah, not that big of a problem. Then I'll move on. So it's it's a good litmus test. I will always, I will never forget this, Ryan, you know, like chop off your finger, that type of problem. Yes. <laughs> this is great. I really want to respect your time, everybody's time. So like, maybe you can just quickly mention the book a little bit, like when is the book coming out, where can yes. you order a copy, and then wrap this up for us. Everybody, don't go away. <laughs> we have an epic ending. <laughs> All right. So ditchtheact.com is the place to go now. You can get your book on pre-order and it is launched officially October 25th, which is pretty quick. Published by McGraw-Hill, written by myself and Leonard Kim. And it's really a look at how to be authentic. And it seems funny. It's like, it seems inauthentic to write a book about being authentic, but we do something very particular. We serve as an example and we show you how exposing our own past can create connection. Then we use real life examples and research of showing you the value of exposing yourself, your vulnerabilities, connecting with people on a human level. And then we give you the worksheets and the, and the actual steps to work through everything. Because at the end of the day, people have to get to know you, to like you and trust you. And for example, when I got my foot stung with a bee, that's not something that I would normally share. But that tweet is probably the most engaged tweet of the entire week. And it's creating real connections. Other people that got stung by a bee, we are now homies. 
So it's really about these five levels of exposure to work up to exposing level fours, the skeletons in your closet, and even level five, what not to share. So it's a really fun look at how to be authentic in a world that's just riddled with inauthenticity. And I encourage you to check it out, to follow Ditch the Act, at Ditch the Act on all the platforms. And again, just understand that trying to be perfect will work against you. Being perfectly imperfect is, actually, here is the deal, let me give it to you real. The key to connection is to learn to reveal. You see, you are not perfect and neither am I. And that is the exact reason we see eye to eye. You see everybody's different, but we are all the same. To be perfectly imperfect is how you win the game. If you only showcase good and do not share the bad, you will miss connections that you never knew you had. Wow, you know what? You know what, Ryan? It's not well, let me say, let me say, we're not done wrapping it up. I know we have one minute left, but that's the wrap up for the Ditch the Act. Now, I just want to reiterate the three simple rules of the 313 to make it stick. First rule is I don't care what you do. You see, I've got problems and so do you. You won't get me interested explaining minor pain. You gotta solve the problem in a finger chopped way. Rule number two, you talk too much like a giddy little kid on a yellow school bus. Start with the what, not with the how. Make it conversational and learn to shut your mouth. Rule number three, create intrigue. Talk about your target market to the nth degree. Tap into the FOMO of the person who is listening. Say anyone or everyone and you will be less interesting. The goal of your pitch is for them to want more. Don't miss opportunity knocking at the door. Calculator stand, water booties or a bookmark. It doesn't matter your idea. Now you know where to start. First you state the problem. Then you say you solve it. And don't, 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 don't forget the market. Uh. <laughs> Wow, you know what? I just officially fired myself. I think you need to host. You need to host this show. You are. This is. Epic. No, this is you bring the be you bring the best out of me. It's like you you bring it out of me. But uh, if if you're listening to this and you are looking for a high energy keynote speaker to come and rally your troops, I not only speak but I also rap, and that is what I'm most passionate about is sharing my message through the stage. So if you're interested in having me keynote at, a, at an event, an industry event, at a conference, just go to ryan.online. You can find more information. And maybe I'll create a wrap for you and your company too. Wow. That is amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. Guys, you absolutely have to book him for consulting and definitely try to get on Ryan's show and get a copy of the book. And this is amazing. And that exercise, thank you again, Peter. And... Uh, <laughs> don't, take your, yeah, yeah, don't take yourself too seriously it, it, you you are beautiful in your flaws flaunt the flaws let people connect with you on a real level and uh, perfectly don't imperfect I perfectly love imperfect i love it yeah you guys see if you like i actually connected with ryan in person he's even funnier in person than like <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> i love all right well high, high five high five to no you gotta go to the side ready go to the side Psh. <laughs> this is fun this is great this is great thank you so much everyone we have so many people who joined us live today on linkedin on periscope on facebook and uh, maybe some on youtube so thank you so much everyone make sure you follow ryan at where what is your at ryan media? foland uh, at yes. ryan foland is on twitter on instagram on ryan.foland you can find everything at ryan.online and a small plug for my YouTube channel. I've actually gotten serious about YouTube. So I make inspired videos in the moment. I have Ditch the Act videos and then 313 videos. And you can find that at ryan.online forward slash capital YT, like YouTube, or just just search, just Google me, figure it out. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, with Ryan, once you get started, you cannot stop watching his <laughs> content. That's what happened to me. So definitely budget. At, at least one hour and next <laughs> wednesday at the same time same location i will have my dear friend vicky o'neill to come to the show to talk about the difference between marketing and sales so this is something i'm not very familiar with so i'm really excited to learn more about this and vicky she's just amazing so i'm really excited definitely mark your calendar and i hope to see you guys next wednesday same time, same location. And Ryan, you are the best, my friend. Thank you so, so, so much. Bye, everyone. Thank you for joining us live. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Are you... we still live?